you have to have this craving for new things in the world. They are not only artistic things. It could be a movie, that could be a trip, curiosity for other people. And it's the way you transform that into fashion, into clothes. It's the best way a collection starts, is to be aware and curious about what is surrounding you in this world. Hi, I'm Nicolas Jesquier, and this is the timeline of my career. I joined Jean-Paul Gaultier in 1990. It was a dream come true for me. I went there and I showed my drawings at the time. That was really fashion teens drawing. And they liked it, so I get hired and they give me my first job. Fashion in the 90s uh, was a crazy place, especially in Paris. It was a job for, uh, for strange people, I would say, for people with uh, strange visions. And, uh, and being at Jean-Paul Gaultier was being in the heart of the game. It was the place to be, the most desirable desirable job uh, in fashion at the time, so I was absolutely amazed to be, to be there in, in the middle of that incredible creative studio. I joined Balenciaga in 1995 as a, what was called a licensed designer, so I was designing clothes for uh, different countries, Asia, South America, and they were not, let's say, uh, the most uh, prestigious collection. So I was designing bridles for renting. I was designing a collection in Japan that was called Black Roses, that was uh, for widows. One day in 1997, so they offered me temporary, the big job of artistic director, but just for six months. They told me uh, at Balenciaga that they were looking for someone famous and they wanted me to, de to do the in-between job, so to design the collection just for one time. Of course, I agreed and I took the job and eventually I stayed for 15 years. I was young, I was 20, 25 when I first started and I think I was 27 when I get the big job. It was a brand that had disappeared from the fashion landscape for many years. Probably since Cristobal Balenciaga stopped uh, his brand in, in 1968. So to be responsible for that rebirth is probably what, one of the things I'm the most proud uh, about, uh, if I can say, in my, in my career, yeah. <laughs> So I was named Women's Wear Designer uh, at the CFDA, yeah, in, the, in 2001, and uh, I was 30 years old. I remember flying in New York, and uh, at the time, the CFDA was a, was a competition. We were three uh, nominated, and I was nominated with Karl Lagerfeld, and uh, I was nominated with Alexander McQueen. And I remember going there thinking, wow, that's a great trip going to New York for a few days. I'm gonna enjoy myself, but there is no way I'm gonna win. So I was surrounded by incredible people. I mean, it's always uh, very impressive to be in America, you know, there was a lot of stars and a lot of designers. And then my name was said. <laughs> and I have to say that this is something that I will never forget because the recognition so early, the recognition of this industry, of people that I admire, that were physically around me in that room was something that uh, that was unique and, and so unexpected that they recognized very early my work. And, uh, and that, that was very special with my relationship with the American audience and public that uh, they were very quick in recognizing uh, what I was doing at Balenciaga. Sometimes quicker than Europeans, strangely, so I'm always very thankful for that, yes. The liar bag had many names. It says a lot about how much people loved that bag because they were making them our thing, very exclusive and, and, and very personal. Um, I designed that bike quite, quite early. It came out in 2001 officially, but it was on a shelf in my studio for at least a year. That bag was asked uh, because everyone was doing bags, obviously, and they told me at Balenciaga, just try one, just like have fun. You can try, you know, to design a bag. So I did that bag. And I put it in the studio, and I remember, especially Kate Moss at the time, walking to the studio for a fitting and look at this little thing in the corner of the room and said, this is a really cool bag. I really want to wear that bag. And 
And I remember Chloe Sevigny also, like coming to Paris, she saw the bag, the same. So I realized that maybe it was time to try to distribute that bag. So I think we manufactured 20 the first time and put them in a Parisian store. And I sent a few bags of for my friends to wear, the one who had the desire to wear it. Kate, Chloe and, and some other French editors and international editors at the time. And then it became a success quite instantly. It was crazy the reaction that the world uh, of fashion and the customer had for that bag, demanding that bag to every department store around the world and it became, became phenomenal. If I did not have designed that bag at the time, I would have never become an artistic director at Louis Vuitton. This is really where I show that I could design more than clothes, that I could design handbags, that I could design shoes, that I could do jewelry, that I could design a full silhouette, that my vision was complete. That bag became a timeless item and it's very, very special when you have something that survived that long in fashion and become a new iconic classic. So I'm very proud of that, yeah. That's my introduction to dressing Hollywood and to dress for red carpet. And it was with Jennifer Connelly. And I had to be in Japan at the time for work. I have a Japanese breakfast in a hotel room with some colleague. And then we are watching the Oscars on TV. And she won. My phone starts ringing. It was New York Times. Everyone was calling. Everyone wanted a quote. Everyone wanted to speak about the dress. So the day after was, was a different experience. There was a terrible contrast between the appreciation of the dress and people who loved it so much and some who hated it so much. So I learned a lot about like what became such very harsh judgment for actresses around the world with their dress. But some people said it was a mop and some others said it was a brilliant and excellent and such a new proposition for red carpet that he was a game changer and some others said it was trash and it was a shame to design that kind of dress for the award so I was really experiencing a mixed feeling of judgment and uh, and yeah and then I was ready to do many more <laughs> So in 2013, when I was called to join the house of Louis Vuitton, in a year where I had decided to stop for two seasons, which is very long in fashion to stop to work for two seasons. You skip one show, it's already complicated. You skip two shows, you feel you're an outsider. And so um, uh, when Vuitton called me and said, OK, we would like you to, to become the artistic director, um, I was really honored because um, it's a house I admire for many years. And also, um, it was a huge step for me. My first vision of at Vuitton was, um, was the fact that we needed to define an aesthetic that was functional, because Louis Vuitton is very functional, luxurious, because obviously it's emblematic from what is the ultimate luxury. That was what I wanted to say. But also, their choice to hire me was also to play the game of fashion. They didn't want something timeless only, or something that was classical. They wanted a true proposition. And I think uh, Marc Jacobs did an incredible work for 16 years. And to be asked to be the second designer at Vuitton after Marc was already a great honor. My vision was really to um, develop a wardrobe that was going to grow season after season. The pressure was very high, obviously, but I tried to stay very quiet, and I remember walking that room and feeling something very warm and nice, and 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 people were like like addressing something very positive to me, uh, like like they missed me, they missed my work, they missed my point of view, they were happy to see what I had to say that day for my first day, my first show at Louis Vuitton. The first bag I did design for Louis Vuitton is called the Petite Mal. It's kind of a miniature of a trend. I went for lunch with Bernard Arnault and we were talking about my vision for Louis Vuitton. And I said, you know, it's funny, my intuition is telling me that we should make a version of the traveling trunk 
but in a small way for a woman to carry during her day, during her night, something that is super functional but have the values of the house that says in one look, this is Louis Vuitton. And he loved that idea. Um, sometimes I'm wondering if I get the job because of that idea only. <laughs> not, not now, obviously, but I think there was really a, a tilt for him, a click. He was like, okay, the guy has a vision that is interesting for the brand. Petit Mal is a good luck, is a good luck items for me today. There is not one show without a Petit Mal. We design like few new proposition every season and people love it. Some people collect them. There's people that have like hundreds of them. This is very impressive. Uh, I have a lot of love for, for, for that first design for Louis Vuitton. So on May 14, 2017, I was in Kyoto presenting my cruise collection uh, in a wonderful museum called the Miho Museum in the middle of a green valley. Uh, this is an extraordinary landscape and we choose that location for um, our cruise show at Louis Vuitton. 600 guests were flying from all around the world at the time, celebrating Japan, who is one of my you know, favorite places to be. Uh, Japanese culture, so rich, and so it was an intense moment. It was a very full moment, uh, inspiring, inspired uh, uh, with friends and, 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 and a lot of people. We had a great show. It's always very uh, incredible to be able to travel with a collection for a cruise show. Uh, we did few, uh, we did one in, in Rio, we did one in New York, we did one um, in uh, Palm Spring, and so every time it's a, it's a great experience to carry the collection somewhere else and to make a different proposition than the fashion week in Paris. So in Kyoto that day it was a great moment of joy but what was happening in Paris in fact was an extreme joy too because it was the investiture of Emmanuel Macron and Brigitte Macron was wearing for the second time my outfit for this investiture and she walked the courtyard of the Elysee Palace with my outfit to what was uh, waiting for her is to become a first lady. So I will always remember that moment when we were in the middle of this crazy extravagant fashion show in Kyoto and on the other side of the planet uh, Brigitte Macron was becoming first lady in my outfit. I enjoy so much dressing Brigitte Macron. She's a very charismatic and solar person. Uh, someone very generous, so inspiring to dress. And so she approached me to work with her or to talk with her about her look a uh, few months before um, Emmanuel Macron was going to become candidate for the presidential election in France. So yeah, it, was, it was an honor to help her. If she doesn't really need help, to be honest, she has a divine test. And this is not only getting dressed. This is representing an industry that is uh, making a lot of jobs, uh, creating a lot of economy. And Brigitte is very aware and responsible uh, and she wants to promote this and uh, for someone like me, uh, of course, it's, it's uh, very enjoyable to see her supporting our industry so much. Louis Vuitton has been a partner and a sponsorship for the Louvre Museum in Paris for many years. They uh, proposed us to show inside the museum, which was the first ever. No one has ever done, obviously, a fashion show in the museum. So I was super honored, super happy to be asked. We are able to pick up the place we wish to show, so this is quite, you know, special. It could be um, complicated to confront, you know, fashion to the most beautiful art around the world, but uh, again, what, what's beautiful is the atmosphere, it's to see you know, you do a show in between, you know, the sculpture or the paintings and the way there is a response, there is an environment that is about art and, it, it, and it's, it's great, you know, it's, uh, it's, I'm not afraid of anachrony in my show, I'm not afraid to mix different periods of times together and to sometimes make a strange proposition in my clothes when it can look like a costume or it could look like a, like a futuristic outfit, you know, and it's really, I think, something 
that's uh, very emblematic of my work. So yeah, I mean, being of the most one of the most beautiful museum in the world to do a fashion show makes sense. It's incredible to do that. Yeah, if I knew when I was a kid visiting the museum that uh, one day I would show inside the Louvre, I, I, it would have been like, oh, no, never. It's never gonna happen. And uh, and yeah, it's it's real. So yeah, that's cool. I was always very curious about virtuality, anticipation, and uh, that's something that I, I have integrated in my work very early on in my in my career in my design. So it was quite natural at some point to go to the virtual world and to, to collaborate with with the virtual world. The story first started with uh, Lightning. Uh, the character of Final Fantasy that became a Louis Vuitton ambassador in my campaign a few years ago. So that was my introduction, finally, to this world. And also to say to the people that we were going to create virtual outfit for virtual character in the same time that, obviously, we were doing real design. So Lightning was a great start, and it was fascinating to collaborate to give the clothes, to design the clothes with the studio in Tokyo and and to see the clothes in movement, digitalized. Uh, so that was my first approach. And then later on when uh, Leagues of Legend approached us to, to design for Sina and, and Kiana a uh, special outfit for the games, uh, I said yes right away. Because of the pandemic and because of the situation around the world, I have decided last year to shoot uh, the campaign myself and to, in a very humble way, I have decided to become a photographer, <laughs> which, which is a big challenge. I have this relation with models, with talents, with actresses for many years and uh, they are very important in my aesthetic and uh, I thought it was interesting to try to not only to dress them, but to capture this emotion, this face this body language that I know so well working with them and try to reflect that in the picture. So I started that a few months ago and I enjoy it so much. I mean, again, I've been working with like incredible talents and incredible photographer for years, so I know exactly this is a serious job and, uh, and you need to have uh, certain assets, so I'm doing it in a very spontaneous way. Uh, but I enjoy it so much and um, I learned a lot and I love, this is a different relationship when someone is on the other side of the camera and you're trying to capture what you think you know from them or what you know from them. And I love this, the fact to share that emotion taking pictures. So I'm going to shoot my third campaign now. So I guess, you know, it's a, it's a great new hobby, I would say, or new uh, um, passion I, I'm having now in my career. So I'm, I'm, really, I, I'm really looking forward to do more pictures, yes. I think now the way fashion is becoming responsible is very important. I'm talking about uh, reflecting the world of today, sustainability, obviously inclusivity. There is so much people that are curious and interested into fashion for the last decade. We have to grab that moment and don't let it go and communicate messages that are very positive and make things evolve. So I think this is a responsibility in a way that we have. So it's the way I see things for me and for Louis Vuitton, obviously. <laughs>